All right. Hi, my name is Hannah Perkey. I'm CEO of Evolo Team with Keller Williams Realty. Today, I have Bob Warner joining me. We're going to give you an update on what's happening in the real estate market in central Indiana. So, Bob, go ahead and get us started off. What happened locally in the market in May? Yeah, we'll just jump right at it. <clears throat> so we've been doing this for several years now each month. So first slide up we take a look at is that median sales price. So for the month ending May, we were at 310 500 That was up 3.8% uh, year over year and up 5% month over month. So we're starting to settle back into that kind of 4 to 6% annual growth rate that we're used to seeing around our parts at least. So that's good news. Um, cumulative days on market, This uh, the top trend line is the average days and the bottom one is the median days. So the big number over here is median. So we were at 10 uh, for the month of May. That was actually up 25% over eight. So not significant month over month and up a little bit more over last year. And then that average days on market was 33. So we're still, again, the majority of listings, I would say we're still seeing under contract within the first week at most, still many the same weekend. Again, very dependent on geographic location and price point. Um, next up is that month supply of inventory. So again, a balanced market, um, kind of being about a four to five month supply of inventory. We've obviously been operating well below that since going all the way back to 2016 was the last time we got above four. So we were at 1.3%. Um, that is up just a really basically decimal points in terms of where we were last month. So pretty flat. And then last year that is up a bit. So it's, you know, we've kind of gone down and up. We'll see how that curve goes over the next couple months. And then the next one in this list, we always like to take a look at the average list price received. So on average, homes in our 16 county area for the month of May sold at 98.6% of list price. Okay. Awesome. All right. So for a while now, we've been talking about tracking the shifting market. So what other factors have you been following to look at the conditions of the shifting market? Yeah, as we came out of the pandemic and went through that craziness and started to see these little ebbs and flows each month, each quarter, each year, uh, we started tracking a few more things. One of those was active inventory. Um, this one's actually pretty enlightening this month. This is our highest increases month over month and year over year that we've seen in active inventory for a while. So we ended May with 4,129 listings active. Um, that's up 21% year over year. So that was a pretty interesting number to me this month. Um, closed sales, uh, we were up month over month with a little over 3,100, but that was down almost 4% over this time last year. So it'll kind of be interesting to see where kind of the rest of the summer goes. I always tell folks our, our highest months of sales in our market are from basically March to August of each year. And you can kind of see that with the way we have these big jumps each year. Um, so I'll be curious if we kind of plateau or see a bigger increase maybe in June and July than what we did in May. Uh, next up is kind of that number of new listings, similar to active listings. This is one we've seen go up for the first time in a bit. Um, so just a little over 3,900. That was up almost 12% month over month and 5% um, year over year. And then kind of the last one we take a look at from this is we started looking at the percentage of homes that close above list price. So we're getting pretty close to 25% again of the homes. So that means one in four closing above list price. That was up a little bit month over month. That is down a little bit from where we were at this time last year. You can see again, back in the height of the pandemic, we were way up here, right? With more than half of the sales closing above um, list price. Again, very price point dependent and geographic dependent, but I think it's always good to like look at those things for some big picture details of what's going on in the market. Well, I think that list price stat, looking at your chart, goes back to conditions we were seeing in what, 18 and 19? Correct. So just for sellers to be thinking of um, and for summer market, right? So yeah. just those curves that we see that if it's not or hot Indiana summer market, then you might be seeing something different. Great. Yes, All right. So everyone always wants to know, tell us about interest rates. How are interest rates doing right now? Yeah. So we're actually down just a tinge from when we did this last month. So uh, again, this just pulls kind of the national average. It doesn't mean that's the rate you're going to go get quoted. This is just a big primary mortgage market survey that gets done every week. Uh, so for the week ending last Thursday, uh, the market for a 30-year fixed rate ended at 6.99. Um, when we did this last month, 
we were just a little bit over seven, so down one tenth of a point. So we're still, I've seen some stuff kind of float back and forth between the 6.75, the 6.875, the 6.99. Obviously, a lot of that's dependent upon the person's credit scores, income, debt to income ratios, other things. But, you know, we're just doing these little blips. We're staying really close to seven. Maybe we go a tinge over one week, then we come a tinge down one week. So we're, we're kind of there, right? And I think we said last month, we we're not seeing any uh, immediate changes and how that's going to look moving forward. Again, the shock of making that change so quickly in the span of like a year was a big, you know, adjustment for the market. But if we kind of look back over the last 50 or 60 years, 7% is still historically low. I bought my first home in the year 2000 and my interest rate was seven percent right so mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of right back where we were almost 25 years ago and um, probably for the foreseeable future we're probably going to stay pretty darn close to that yeah that might become a less exciting point to discuss in our meetings here right because it's not we're not seeing a lot of movement whereas before you just never knew month to month where it could be so exactly. okay all right any final thoughts on the market right now yeah, I just always try to find something to end with. Uh, just kind of found this interesting chart the other day and uh, two thirds of homeowners have at least 50% equity in their homes. Um, so that's a pretty big stat and how that splits up, you can see here. Uh, I found this one the most interesting, the biggest chunk here, the screen 39.3% uh, own the home free and clear. So that means no mortgage, it's been completely paid off. Um, I don't think I would have ever guessed that number was that high. Um, the next biggest one here, 33.9, that is those that have a mortgage but have less than 50% equity. So that's about 30%. Um, but then we've got, you know, two third, you know, another third here. You know, we've got the greater than a third that owns it outright, and we have almost another third here that has greater than 50% equity. So, you know, if you've been waiting on the sidelines at all, yeah, interest rates are definitely a little higher than what they might have been a couple of years ago. But if you're in the position where you've owned a home a long time and you have a life change or you're downsizing, right sizing, it uh, could be the time to capitalize on that, right? Um, you might be able to buy your next home in cash. Uh, you might be able to put a significantly larger down payment um, in place so that that lowers your mortgage overall. So the interest rate becomes a little less relevant. Um, and just offer up, right? If you haven't had someone do kind of an equity analysis in your home, um, that's something we can definitely do for you. If you're interested, I know we'll share contact information number here in a minute, but uh, that's something any of the agents on our team can do. Just kind of get a sense. Mm -hmm. If you don't own it free and clear, what's your balance? Uh, you know, we do a quick comparative market analysis, can dump that into a spreadsheet and kind of show you uh, what you might be able to walk away with if you decided to sell. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we'd like to keep that short and sweet, but give you the facts that you need. So we hope that was helpful today as you look at what's happening here in Central Indiana. Um, feel free to comment below if you have any questions. We'll get back to you, um, or you can reach out to us directly, 317-863-9011. Um, you can email us to info at evolodeteam.com. And um, if you need anything else, we are here for it, uh, just to be your point of contact for any real estate needs. We hope you have a great afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.